This is ridiculous. I didn't even drink this time and I landed in a holding cell. I want my lawyer! I want my lawyer! Somebody call a doctor! I'm claustrophobic! Sneebly, no one's going to believe you're claustrophobic. I'm seeing purple and blue. Help! <coughs> Somebody help! Quiet down in there. Uh, well, that's just rude. Well, to be fair, the Phoenix was a breach of most self-defense laws. Actually, probably all of them. Look, seriously now, there was a few dozen mobsters. Ain't a goblin, an orc, a skeleton, and a lady supposed to have the right to do what they gotta do to survive? Guess not. Uh, you guys forget that that's the key. An orc, a goblin, and a skeleton. If it had been just north of a human, but it wouldn't have landed in nothing but a slap on the wrist. Sorry, doll. No offense. <sighs> None taken. Well, regardless, none of us are lined up on death row. At least not yet. Wait! You hear that? Somebody's coming. Time for another thrilling episode of The Questing Murders! When last we left our heroes, they had defeated an army of violent gangsters and saved the day! Only to be imprisoned by the Thermopolis Police Department. As they await their fate, time ticks ever closer to another horrid act by the Questing Killer. What will happen to our intrepid heroes? Well, keep listening, dear fans, and find out. I'd occasionally been in and out of some holding cells over the years, usually for booze-related incidents. It wasn't exactly a habit, but it happened often enough that I was familiar with it, and our service to the city usually kept things fast and simple. Pay a fee or a bribe, make sure that we get on our way to catching our next perp, but every second we wasted here today was a second that helped that rogue knight fella. But what I didn't expect was the fella coming to help us out now. You know... Back in my day, folks who caught bad guys got medals. Didn't end up in friggin' cells for it. Cole Bold. Mob boss in his own right. About the most dangerous fella either side of the East River. Nothing happened in the city that he didn't know about. He was a rat man. Head of the Bold family. Nobody, not even the police department, tried to touch him if they knew what was good for him. Um. Hello, Don Bold. It's a surprise to see you here. Well, I'll say. Ain't really my kind of hotel. <laughs> I don't suppose you're here out of the goodness in your heart, are you? Not quite. Are you here to kill us? Not today. Maybe at some point, but nah. I'm making good on the promise to a business associate. Heard you met him up in the Lost Borough. The Hobo King. Oh, great. He asked me to fix this whole murder issue that's got the city stirring again. Said he thought you idiots was behind it. I tells him you're not. It just so happened I knew that a certain orc mob was howling to take you guys down before you could stop them. My good sir, are you implying that you knew about the attack on our offices before they happened? Knew about it. I gave my blessing on the move. Why you no good, low down, dirty, dirty rat! <laughs> I'm gonna give you one chance to take that back, Goblin. Uh, I have. Reconsidered my position and I'm sure you had your reasons. <laughs> so happens that I did know, and I wanted him to attack you. Cleared your names with the Hobo King and, uh, shall we say, 
called the cautious numbers. Huh. Well, I'll be damned. Whole thing's a chess game, kids. Wise up and maybe you'll learn that one day. But for now, consider yourselves, uh, officially hired for this case. Oh. Excellent. I'm overjoyed. Thought you might be. Go get him. And just like that, we were out of custody, and as it seemed to happen so often on our job, cuffed for something else. It was all one big corrupt vaudeville show. We'll be back after a word from these sponsors. Folks, have you ever gotten basilisk blood all over your clothes when cooking? Have you ever gotten a magical stain that just won't come out? Thermopolis' greatest cleaning company wants you to know that there's a way to fix all that and more. Borzak Soap sells a variety of excellent detergents and cleaning supplies with a secret ingredient that will remove almost any stain or mark on clothes, furniture, rugs, and even automobile seats. Borzak Soap. They take the axe to your messes. And now, back to the show. Let's review what we know. Fella, we're looking for is an evil knight of some kind. From a thing called the Blazing Order, I think? Right. And he's getting backed by a bunch of thugs, even though his target is all non-humans. Where on earth would a man in knight's armor hide, though? I mean, obviously he moves under cover of... Huh. <laughs> nice. Uh, he's probably not ducking into one of the cautious speakeasies of clubs. Not only would the fella stick out like a sore thumb, but they probably wouldn't feel very comfortable with a stab-happy guy hanging around. If he's back up in the Lost Borough, then the Hobo King would be rooting him out and fast, assuming he isn't as, uh, eccentric as Hidalgo. Huh. I just thought of something. Yeah? What's that? Well, okay. Think about it like this. Everyone who's looking for him is looking where he murdered those folks. The Lost Borough Traveler's District. You know. The city in general or the outskirts. But, I mean, what if he could hide in the city without being in the city? That would be incredibly difficult to do, Mr. Snebly. Yes and no. I mean, technically it could be any singular pocket dimension that makes buildings bigger on the inside. But, if you wanted to give him escape opportunities, you'd want Queen's Garden Park. Wait, that's brilliant! It is. And it'd give him plenty of cover if he comes out at night. Slip in and out without any problems, the underbrush would hide everything. And of course, it's the last place anyone would look for a slashing villainous murderer. Well, sounds like a good spot as any to check out. Come on, let's head that way. Queen's Garden Park. It was this massive slice of nature all contained in the center of Thermopolis's beaten heart. Magical ponds to take romantic one-on-ones out on. Enchanted trees that made it cool even on the hottest days of summer. Wide open spots to take pets and have a breath of fresh air. After our late night gallivanting around the lost burrow, I was a bit hesitant to jump right back into thick trees and all that. But without Hildalgo feeding us information about the fella, we didn't have much of a lead otherwise. And Sneebs was right. Theoretically, it was the perfect place to lay low. Everybody would be checking city blocks, when they should have been checking bushes. And here we are! Queen's Garden! It's said to have some of the most beautiful fragrances in the city. Ah... Uh, I can smell nothing! Alright, so what's the plan? I... I guess we ought to split up. And what happens if we find him? Eh, just holla. Like, all aloud. Myself and Miss Northrop will start that way. Mr. Sourick, you and Steve go the other way. And perhaps one day we will figure out an efficient means to communicate over distance. Sounds good. Come on, Sneebs. Good luck, guys. You two, uh, two, 
You two, too. <laughs> the park was beautiful, serene, real peaceful. Well, did we know that we were walking right into about just the worst trap yet. Split once again! Will our gaggle of underdogs manage to find the questing killer? Or will they become corpses in this mad hunt? What lies ahead in the darkest corners of the Queen's Garden Park? Find out the answer to all these questions and more the next time on The Questing Murders! If you like your programming mixed with great music, Tune in for Tidy Tusk's Radio Hour every Thursday at 5 p.m. Here's a show that promises to keep Thursdays from dragging on. So keep an eye on your local newspapers for the time of Tidy Tusk's Time. This is Johnny Rockwell speaking for the Mopolis News Radio. Keep your days magical, folks. <laughs>